So this next step is, or this next cycle is con constructing the level. So Mike gave me all the fun steps. He's a really good boss. <laughs> so here we have a very basic level on this platform's tile map. But one of the most important parts of platformers is being able to stand on the platform. If you don't stand on the platform, your character's just going to fall through. So, but however, the trouble is, is that levels are often iterated upon. You often build a bit of level, test it, and then you build a bit more, and then you test that, and you build a bit more. It's very, I don't think any game ever is all levels drawn, and then it's done. You know, they're constantly iterated on. Only the ones I make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we need to factor this in. So we're going to add a collider that we've added to the tarmap system, which automatically updates as you paint more of the level. So on the platform's game object, I'm going to go to this add component list. And using the component search, just type tile, we have tile map, tile map renderer, and we have a tile map collider 2D. What this does is, as you notice, it adds a little green box around every single tile. And as I paint more of the level, you notice that the green boxes keep getting added. These are little colliders around every single tile. It means that we can set this up iterate on a level and paint some more areas, and then the collide, we don't have to worry about setting up the collider. It's automatically going to update. And if I actually turn off the renderer, you'll see that the little colliders keep getting added and added and added. Now, the trouble with this is every single one of these tiles has a green collider box around it. And games are often, you know, this, is, this, is, this wouldn't even be a tutorial. Games with tile maps are often like thousands and thousands and thousands of tiles. So this is not going to be very performant. So we added a component which can take these colliders and combine them. And you can enable this by clicking Used by Composite. One more thing to add real quick. Besides the fact that it's not performant to have all of those colliders, it also won't function correctly because you're going to get stuck as you're just walking across the smooth surface that you hit the corner of every one of those colliders, right? It's going to be annoying, right? So Besides performance, there's also other reasons to not just utilize it as it is exactly. So instead of making a walking simulator, you're making a tripping simulator. Stumbling simulator. Yeah. Stum, stum, yeah. All these jokes are definitely not planned beforehand. <laughs> Obviously. So when you have this used by composite ticked, Unity is very smart and it says, hey, here is a warning. This collider will not function without this desired component. Thank you, Unity. And what we can then do is we can then add the composite collider what you'll notice is now, look, it takes all the colliders and wraps around it. So if I now paint a bit more of the level, might be able to see it. If I turn off the tile right render, you'll definitely be able to see it. As I paint more of the level, you'll notice, look, it's automatically adjusting for us. We don't have to worry about every individual collider. Look at that level design. It's just it's so beautiful, Mike. Amazing. However, there's a slight problem with this composite collider we can fix quite easily. And that is, if I go into play mode, which is then testing and simulating our game, the whole level falls. So Robbie stays still, but the whole level falls. Now, I don't know about you, but there's not many platformers where that is an ideal scenario, except for like maybe, hmm, can you think of any platformers where the whole level falls and you don't? I don't. I can't. OK, someone's going to make that <laughs> after training day today. <laughs> so be like, oh, yeah. yeah. I will see that on Steam in like a make few months. fall version. And that's because when you add the composite collider, it adds a rigid body 2D component to this tile map. We don't want it to fall. Thankfully, we can set this from dynamic to static so it does not fall. So now if we're going to play mode, this collider will stay, or this tile map will stay exactly as we like it. And there's Robbie standing there in his beautiful world, not doing anything. Now, Robbie still doesn't do anything yet. We'll do that in a later step. So one of the cool things about the tile map system, this is kind of like the last step is we have here this grid component, which lays out these squares. And we have this platform's tile map layer. And the tile map system in Unity is really cool in that you can have multiple tile maps on the same grid for different backgrounds. So if you think of, say, like Mario, you have like the background tile map. Then you've got like the clouds layer. You then got like the, the bushes. You then have the level. You then have like the UI and then the, the effects and things like this. Unity's tile map system works in the same way. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a very boring level. Actually, this is about the amount of art I could probably create, maybe. Um, and we want to add some extra layers. So just purely for time's sake, in the tile maps folder, we have these three prefabs right here. And you can select all three of them. One is background, one is background detail, and one is shadows. 
going to drag this as children of the grid and then reorder this very slightly. So we have the reorder this very slightly. So what we have here is we have the background, which is the background wall. Background detail, which is all like those uh, creepy little faces that are, that are in the background. The platforms, which we walk on and Robbie walks on. And then we have that front shadow layer. It's also worth noting, in case you missed it, that what Andy did is he dragged those prefabs onto the grid itself, not like into the hierarchy and then onto the grid. By dragging onto the grid directly, it positions directly on the grid, and so the positioning is all lined up. So the grid is kind of a container, or in, in Unity, a parent of these grids. So with these added, and these are all just tar maps. If I select them individually, they're purely tar maps there just to save time so we don't have to go create tar map, create tar map, create tar map. We're not cutting any shortcuts. Well, we sort of are, but like mostly for time's sake. So we can get onto the cool stuff. You'll notice that in the tile palette, we now have multiple options, not just platforms. We have the shadows layer, the background layer, and the background detail layer. And this is how the tile palette system works. We can then go to the tile palette, have a look at it and choose, hmm, what do we want to paint some tiles onto? We want to paint some tiles into the background. It's looking a bit bland. Go to the background. We could then switch between different palettes. So if I now go to the background layer, we have all these different tile options. We then choose what we want to paint. So I really like this, this pretty cool brickwork here. And you'll notice that we then have this tile previewing, but it's going behind this uh, platforms layer. And that's because the background is on a different sorting layer. So we have the background layer, like the whole sky, vegetation, platforms, UI layer. We've got the background is rendering behind everything. The platforms are rendering in the middle. The player is just in front of the platforms. We have the foreground, then the default layer. So we've got from back, which is at the top, to front, which is at the bottom. So what we can then do is we can then select the background layer, select a tile, and then we could, we could paint individually, but that's boring. Instead, I'm going to choose this uh, like paint fill box area and then drag out a big, nice, big background. Then on the background layer, I'm going to choose this rule tile here. And this rule tile is pretty cool in that what it does is as you paint it, and I'll show you over here, it basically kind of creates a snake light. So you, as you paint the tile, it detects what its neighbors are, and then it paints it accordingly. And it also means that we can fill it in, and you'll notice it automatically updates what the central tiles are. And that's using exactly the same rule tile that the random tiles use. So let's, I'm not an artist, but let's create a nice snake-like pattern here. And something that looks like this. Look how beautiful that is, Mike. It's amazing. Then I'm going to take this face. So you'll notice here that we have this face that Mike very lovely mo for us. Thanks, Mike, or You're scanned. Welcome. And instead of selecting each tile individually, and I'm going to put this on the background detail layer, instead of selecting each tile individually, you can actually do a drag selection. And now we have this face. So you can select an area of tiles and paint them all together. So I'm going to put this you here. You know what? Draw that on the background layer real quick just to show them why we have a secondary background detail layer. So you see the tiles have alpha to them. And so if they're just drawn on the layer, we miss the background behind them, right? And so that's why we have background for the walls and the background detail for the faces, things with alpha that we'll see through. So now if I get rid of that, switch to the background detail layer, hey, look, it's going to render on top of it. So it's rendering in front of the background, but still behind the platforms layer. So I can now put this here, put this here. Oh, it's, it's, this, is, this is true level design right here. It's amazing. And then I take this cheeky face, which was definitely, this was uh, mocap by Ethan. If you see him around, he looks like this. Thanks, Ethan. We have some faces here. I like here. how you keep saying mocap on stilled image. <laughs> I'm tired, man. <laughs> so we have a bit of a level. Now, one of the last uh, elements I'm going to paint onto this level is shadows. So I'm going to switch to the shadows layer. What you'll notice here is that we have a couple of shadow tiles. But this last one, this very, very last one here, uses the same rule tile as we have here. And as I paint it, you'll notice that as we create more of a square, it's automatically going to detect which tiles to paint. And we have this kind of soft edge. So we're going to paint this just in front of here. And look, as you notice, hey presto. Now you might be thinking those shadows kind of look kind of ridiculous being solid black in front of the platforms now. That's fine. Later, they're going to look really cool. So just trust me on this one. 
Mike was telling me off for taking too long on painting stuff earlier beforehand, so... You're doing fine, Andy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the motivation. You so, can... yeah, here we go. We have some more levels. So, as opposed to before, we had just a blue background and then some boring tiles. We now have a edge with a shadow. We've got some creepy faces. We've got Ethan in the background. Cheers, Ethan. And we have this detail as well. So sort of going through those, that was quite a few different bits of steps. So I'm going to go through them super quickly again. So go to the platforms layer, add a tarmap collider, and set it to use that composite collider, that one that combines all the colliders together. Add the composite collider. Unity will throw up a warning saying, hey, we need a composite collider, otherwise it won't work. We don't want the world to fall because that's not a very good platformer. So we switch the body type from rigid body 2D to static so it does not fall. Next, in the tar maps folder, we have these three blue prefabs of tar maps. And we're going to add them to the grid as children. And you can rearrange them if you want. I've rearranged them in the order that they render background, background detail, platforms, and shadows. And then choose your tile map. This is very important. Otherwise, you don't want to paint shadows on the wrong tile map. You don't want to paint Ethan's face onto different tile maps. Choose which palette you want to look at. And then take data and paint them onto your tile map. And of course, remember to save. If you don't want to build your own level right now, or you're not feeling comfortable with it, or you just want something to start with and build off of, we have provided a reference layout that we're going to be using. You're welcome to use that one, or you can build whatever you want. So if you go into scenes, and there is a scene called uh, level reference, it has everything we've done up until this point. However, it just is formatted like this, right? So it just has something kind of set up, so it's, something to start with. It uses exactly, we haven't added any magical things that we haven't already shown you. It's using exactly the same palettes, exactly the same tar maps and things like this. We spent more time. Just spent more yeah. time, Mike spent more time in painting out this level. Whichever route you go, just ensure that your level has somewhere the exit that you're going to want the player to go through to win. And we generally do that like three blocks high. It could be anywhere between one and three blocks high. Any higher, the player could theoretically jump over the door. So you don't want that. But just have some place where the player is going to go to win. And we have that in this level right over here. Uh, but for you guys, wherever you want. 